Hey guys, this is Rob, this is ETN. We are nine weeks away from Avengers Age of Ultron, so it's time to start the weekly countdown. We're marching to the Avengers. Okay, welcome back. So, perfect timing, I guess, because we got an Avengers trailer today as well. I will be putting up the trailer review shortly after you, uh, you see this video. It should be up on the channel. Uh, but we're going to march to the Avengers. So, for the next nine weeks, we're going to be discussing all the Phase 1 and Phase 2 Marvel movies leading up to Age of Ultron. And this video, we're going to start with Iron Man. Yes, Iron Man. And I watched it the other day, and after so many... I haven't seen it in a while. But one thing i got to say right away with this movie is it still has stood the test of time. It's been about, what, I mean, seven years now since uh, Iron Man. And I remember when the movie came out, or at least when it was around coming out, it was very interesting because at that time, Robert Downey Jr. hadn't been on the scene for quite some time. So there was a lot of, like quiet optimism about the movie you know at that time iron man wasn't very popular in the comics and uh it was a very interesting choice as marvel's uh marvel cinematic universe's first movie but it was you know basically they didn't have the pick of the litter spider-man at the time was with uh, sony which they still are obviously the x-men were the worst uh excuse me were with fox and fantastic four with fox as well so they had to go the avengers route that was pretty much that ensemble, very, very popular, and they started off with Iron Man, and uh, I gotta say, right off the bat, when I rewatched the movie, uh, you know, again, special effects are still very solid, considering it's a seven-year-old movie, um, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. did an excellent job, it's probably, a lot of people agree that it's the best movie out of the series, and uh, after watching it last night, I gotta, you know, I still have to watch the other two and kind of refresh my memory, but... I will say it was very enjoyable, very, very enjoyable, seeing him uh, pretty much be the arrogant, cocky person that he is, and, you know, his experience basically humbles him to the point that he doesn't want to make weapons anymore, and the only weapon, or the only, the only thing close to a weapon he makes is the Iron Man suit, something he originally got inspired to create to help himself and Yinsen escape, capture, and knowing that he had the capability to make that suit with the arc reactor, which was actually obviously started off with uh, Yinsen making it for him to keep the shrapnel out. He obviously uses arc technology to improve it. And then lo and behold, sometime later, the Iron Man suit is born. And, uh, you know, he uses the suit to basically not really your typical superhero stuff. You know, he doesn't go to the city and fight crime. I mean, the first thing he does in the movie when he decides to take action is fly to the Middle East. <laughs> so... Uh, so, you know, but obviously because of his interactions with the military and the government being a weapons uh, expert and a weapons creator, uh, that made perfect sense for him. So, a very, very so uh, solid cast, obviously Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Robert Downey Jr., of course, Terrence Howard at the time, Terrence Howard, uh, it's amazing when you look back and, you know, it's uh, when I saw him in the movie, I said to myself, boy, man, you really screwed up. I mean, he wanted such a large payday. He could have had multiple paydays up to this point. And I really do like Terrence Howard. Uh, but Don Chadell is not a bad replacement. I think Don Chadell overall is a bit of a better actor than Terrence Howard. Very, very close. Very close. So, but this was the start of it. This was the start of, of uh, phase, you know, the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's funny, you look back and from where they started to where they are now... You know, I looked at the list of movies in exact order because I'm going to do it in exact order, which means next week I'll be discussing and doing a short review on The Incredible Hulk. But when I look at the order of the movies, they really did steadily improve as time progressed. And Iron Man, you know, a lot of people criticize the second one and criticize the third one. Um, I'm going to reserve my comments and my judgment on those movies until I watch them again because it has been some time since I watched them. But Tony as a character has changed so much over the course of time he's never lost that swag he's never lost that cockiness but he's been very bold he's gone after 
uh, he's developed so many different technologies within the storyline and he's he, he's never happy you know he's always reaching for more to try and either improve himself or improve the world and you know we saw how obsessed he got from the first movie to the third and now obviously we're going to see in age of ultron that his obsession to improve whether it be improve himself or improve the world uh was a little bit too bold he reached reached a little bit too far now in terms of um the whole iron man story obviously Tony Stark, a.k.a., uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr., has meant a lot to the MCU. They have crafted this world around him, but they've also been able to develop uh, other characters that can stand on their own. I really think Captain America has come a long way from the first movie and then the Avengers to the Winter Soldier. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, obviously, him in Civil War. But, um, you know, the Iron Man movie, was it was really fun to watch again. I hadn't watched it in a long time. And uh, I thought I was going to get bored because one of the things I remembered about this movie was there wasn't a whole lot of action. There wasn't a whole lot of action. I mean, he donned the suit a handful of times, maybe less throughout the whole movie. Uh, the first portion of the movie was him building the makeshift suit and then steadily improving the uh, the final suit that he uses. And then obviously Obadiah takes his uh, arc uh, chest piece and he has to use the older one, which is dying. And, uh, you know, Jeff Bridges was great in that movie, too. Um, he was really, really good. You know, it was just a really solid, solid cast. And, uh, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. has become Tony Stark. I mean, he really took that character and ran with it. And a lot of people cannot see anyone else ever playing that role. We say this a lot when we see um, actors do such a good job playing roles. We've said that with Heath Ledger. But we're going to see how Jared Leto pulls it off. Uh, you know... Even Wolverine, uh, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, uh, <laughs> in a recent article said that if he wa if he was going to play in a Marvel Cinematic Universe, he would want to be by the side of Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and he wouldn't want to be it w he wouldn't want it to be anybody else. So that's how much Robert Downey Jr. has bought this character back, and it's amazing because they've all they've both served off of each other. You know, before the first Iron Man movie, Iron Man was not a very... Not that he wasn't popular. I mean, he was known. He'd been around for years, but he wasn't up there with the Spider-Mans and the Wolverines of the world. And uh, because of Robert Downey Jr., he's back on the map in a big way, and vice versa. Because of the Iron Man character and the opportunity Robert Downey Jr. was given, now Robert Downey Jr. is back on the map. I mean, shortly, a couple of years after that, he made Tropic Thunder... And did such a funny performance in that movie, he actually got nominated for an Oscar. And obviously the Sherlock Holmes series is very popular, and he's done his steady flow of work in movies since the first Iron Man. So it's just wonderful to go back seven years and see how he had his second opportunity to be in Hollywood and work and do the things that he enjoyed as a younger person before getting in trouble, and then now uh, looking at where he is. But yes, the first Iron Man movie still very charming. About a two-hour movie, uh, you know, good story, not a not um, an overflux of action that a lot of people probably would have enjoyed at the time. But they did such a good job developing the character, building the world, and using Iron Man and Tony Stark to to set the foundation for what they have now. That now I go back and I look at it and I appreciate it so much more now. Um, so if you haven't seen Iron Man in a while, I suggest watching it. It's it's a real different feeling watching the movie now knowing what's happening than it than it was maybe when you first saw it so but that's where we're going to leave off next week we're going to do incredible hulk we're going to shortly review that movie and talk about the hulk and just have a general discussion about him and then every week leading up into the release of avengers age of ultron so we got a lot of good movies marvel movies we're going to reflect on for the next couple of weeks obviously captain america thor uh, even Guardians of the Galaxy is on that list. I was like looking at this. I'm like, wow, I just reviewed this a couple of months ago. So, but again, these are going to be like mini reviews and just general discussions about these characters and these particular movies and what they mean to the universe, what they mean to the phase at the time they came out and just other general stuff. And obviously I want to hear you guys thoughts on the uh, particular topic or movie that I might be bringing up. But until then, the march continues next week. I'll see you guys. You can expect my Age of Ultron trailer to be up shortly. Uh, and that's it. All right, guys, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe.
Join the nation's Facebook page to meet other subscribers or visit ETN's Facebook page and Twitter page. Links for all are in the description.